Okay, more fun with epoxy art today. So uh, last night I made this pour, <clears throat> and I have a previous video on mistakes that I've made and things I've learned from working with uh, epoxy resin and um, different materials. And just quickly, I wanted to keep all this detail of this beautiful worm-eaten uh, green. Actually, it wasn't done by worms. It was actually done by carpenter ants. And what happened is I did a sealer coat on this wood a couple days ago and got my paintbrush down in here and thought I got enough in these nooks and crannies here to seal. And I pretty much did, but I had one little pesky bubble, right? Coming out of this crack right here. And I fought it with the torch for about two hours. Then what happened, I made the mistake on trying to pop a bubble with the little end of a, that little tip right there, that little broken end on this little Hobbycraft paintbrush. And what happened is it stuck to it and pulled up. And so uh, this video, I'm gonna show you how to fix a screw up because I think we can bring it back, okay? So stay tuned. Okay, so here we are down in the shop and I took the Dremel, the little sanding drum, and we are working that out. And what we did is we sanded all the high areas and we're trying to get down to where the, the bubble is. It's deep. You can see what it looks like if we wipe it off with a, a damp paper towel. See that bubble still there. We gotta get rid of that bubble. The rest of it we can make, we can bring back. We can bring the rest of it back. We can get rid of that. But we may have to. You may have to dig more of that out with that thing. It's it's down to the wood. See. Yeah. It's down to the wood. You have to dig down a little bit further that Dremel. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna work on unless, a little unless bit I more. keep trying to sand it out, but I don't know if I could sand that far down. That's down to the wood. By the way, see that injury on Redneck Bill's finger? That's what's hap That's what happens when you don't use a push stick and you're not paying attention on the table saw, right? No. Oh yeah. Yeah. That bubble's still there. It's got debris in it though. My sanding debris. It was, we need to get rid of that bubble. You're going to have to take that Dremel tool. And gently kind of just go back and forth. Let me try it. Back and forth just a little bit like this. Not Okay, sure. Nice and smooth. No, no, nothing sure. stupid with it. Okay. You want to dry that off? Here, I'll dry this off. Hold on. Boy. There it is, right there. And it's definitely in there. It's a deep one, like it's turned under the wood. Well, if we have to, we can take her down to it. We're gonna have to. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to go where I hit the woods, what I'm trying to avoid. <laughs> I'm trying to blend it so it, when I sand it, it's easier to sand. It's still there. It's almost, I'm almost to it, I think. I'm getting closer. Mm -hmm. go a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to go back and forth and blend that. So mm -hmm. I 
wipe that off. Okay, so I'm using a damp piece of uh, paper towel here. It's still there. Isn't it? Almost gone. Almost gone. Okay, and then after we do this, we're going to hit it with a little, uh, what, like 2,000 grit? We'll do like 1,500, 2,000, or 3,000. Looks like there's something right there, too. Yeah, there is a bubble right there. I just seen it come out. See it? Mm-hmm. Wipe that off. Here, let me blow it off too. I, just, yeah. I think I can lose it. Okay, watch that. out. Okay, so we feel like we've got it pretty much worked out. What we're going to do now is we're going to wet sand this area. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to hit it with some 320. And we're wet sanding that. So we're continuing with the wet dry. This is 1500 here. 1500. Can't find just kind of. Just kind of feathering it out now. Dry. Yeah. I need my 2000. I gotta find my 2000. So the idea here is I've still got enough room here on the edges to do another pour. And although it's mostly like a sheet of glass, in we're these wormholes are, there's a s slight indentation. You can just barely see it. See that? So the idea here is after we get this sanded out and feathered out, we're going to clean this up and do another pour, and this should finish us off here and give us a nice, clear, smooth finish. There was a little over there, too, that's it's not a bubble. It's just there's kind of an indentation because that epoxy was soaking in. I think with this, these deep areas down here, I think 
instead of doing this with just a, a sealer coat and um, I made a small pour and filled those up and then let the sealer coat and this dry. I think what I should have done is done a, a thinner pour. Maybe done this in two or three pours maybe. It's looking good though. That bubble's gone. Oh yeah, the bubble's gone. We've got to get some shine to it. What we got now, that probably would clear up even with a clear coat. I yeah. assume get the polish a little bit. Yeah, I know I'm going to do several more. Okay, that's working out of there. That's awesome. All right, we're gonna work on this a little bit more, and then uh, I'm gonna worry about some grooves you cut with that when you did the when you did that thing. You got to carry away all them deep grooves. Mm -hmm. Are they going to show? Well, Let's see, they got scratches in them. Look, see, I did mine nice and gentle. I don't have any scratches. See them big marks you got in yours? Yeah. It's going the opposite way of the grain. We need to get them out of there so they match the grain. If not, they're going to look okay. They're going to look funny. So it's I don't know how deep they are. Mm, they're deep. Should we hit it and go this way? I think we're going to have to because they're going to show. Well, let's let's dabble some. See, water I was on going it. with the grain. You were going this way. That's yeah. A, that's a big mistake. Yeah. I'm going to have to, I don't know, I should use the dermal and try to grind it down more or try to sand them up. But them motherfuckers are deep you got in there. That one there is. God damn it. They got to come Let's out. Let's dribble some water on there and see, see what, what it looks like. Yeah, but see where mine, it don't show. No. But you see your mark where you're going off to the grain. Yeah. I don't know why you did cross the grain. Because I wasn't thinking. Again, I'm in a hurry. Yeah, he's be in a hurry. So you're still going to show, see him? You still see him? Yeah. They got to go. They got to right. go. But we're getting there. Yeah. Just going to do a little more work. So I'll get the Dremel. You're seasoning, Mike. You're making it work. Look at that. So it's all worked out. Now we got water on this to kind of replicate what the epoxy will look like. But there never, it is. You'll never see it. You'll never, you'll never see that now. So we're going to clean this up. Tonight I'm going to come out in the office and what do another re pour. It's reset. It should be done. Redneck Bill cleaned it up. So my mistake was I took the Dremel and just started going at it this way. It got carried away. And what you need to do is you need to go with the grain. Yeah, I may have taken it down a little too far. But anyway, so 1,500, 2,000, then 3,000 wet dry. It's gone. That right there, it was just, it was just, last night when I made the pour, bubbles were just rolling out of here. Bubbles really were, and just drilled the bubbles out, and they'd been gone. Yeah. So, I think next time, if this happens. I don't even see it now. No, you don't even see it. It's gone. Next time, we're going to. Well, we know how we can fix this now, we got issues. Yeah. It may be time consuming, but we could do it. There we go. So, it's kind of a deep gash, but that epoxy is really forgiving. So. This is this is the test piece for this overall project. This is going to be our new countertop. See, that's got some character, man. That's really, really cool stuff. What I'm going to do is I'm going to inlay pictures all over here uh, of like old 40s and 50s RVs, and then we left the. 
the rough chainsaw cut here when we cut actually cut the the tree down. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have to go in here and, and brush all these end grains with epoxy. We're gonna do a sealer coat. Get down in here with the brush and seal that up. And what I've learned here at this point is I'm gonna do this multiple times. I'm gonna do real small pours. Maybe two or three probably three and slowly fill these up <clears throat> and then we'll give it a when I, when I get all all of these smooth with the top then we'll go and start doing the final the final top coat pour but anyway hopefully it'll look like that how deep that is isn't that pretty all right so we're gonna wrap this up and in a few minutes here we'll have the finished product. Okay, so <clears throat> Buford and I, hi Buford. We are back in the office here and we just did a pour, a final coat pour on the project that we've been working out. And if you remember, uh, right around that area right there is where the bubbles came through and we had to dig all that out so basically what I did is I poured this and I used one of these foam brushes here and evened everything out going along the edge here putting a nice edge on here and got the side pieces here So I'm feeling pretty good about this. I think this is a go. I don't think I'm going to put any more epoxy in there. I'm almost up to the edge of the surround here. And I guess that's kind of optional for like what you'd want to do. As far as you want it pouring over the edge. Do you want it to be level with it? I'm going to opt for a little sunken in look because this is going to hang on a wall. So I'm kind of thinking more kind of 3D-ish. Okay, so I'm just kind of going around here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go underneath with the edge of this brush and I'm just going to kind of catch all the stuff that's trying to drip off here. This is kind of hard to do this to film this and work here because the camera is kind of in my way. So we're just going to kind of wing it. Remember, this is the test piece for my counter project here, so <clears throat> I want it as perfect as I can get it, but we'll just see what happens. Okay, so we're going to put that back there. All right, so looks pretty good on camera. I'm going to try to get the angle down here where you can actually see it's kind of bubbly. This has been, I poured this about, what, five, six minutes ago, and I want to kind of naturally let the bubbles come up to the top and pop um, and those bubbles are recreated in the mixing cycle here and I mix this epoxy about four or five minutes so here's what I'm gonna do <clears throat> take the old port the uh, torch and I preheated this I like to preheat these and you don't get a weird flame and stuff plus my bottles running out here so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kinda go over this like this Okay. You don't really need to be in a hurry, just kind of watch the bubbles and you can kind of see them disappear. I'm, I'm seeing it here in real action, but on the camera it may be hard. So I'm going to go back at this angle. Let me see if I can get this taken care of here. Okay, we're going to go over here and get this. Okay, now, here, I see a problem. Right over in that pocket, right there, right up here against the, the edge here, I've got an issue. So I'm going to take, and I'm just going to kind of dab that back over there like that, right? Okay. And... Let's 
So this is a one take deal guys. If I screw up you're going to see it on camera. Can't go back and edit this. Okay. So there's like a little bubble right off there to the side. Not too noticeable but we're going to see what we can do with it. Okay, so I'm going to go back and hit it with the torch. There we go. That worked out beautiful. Just going to kind of heat that up. So I'm doing two things, all right? Look at that mirror finish. Remember that big old goober we had this morning right there? That thing was gigantic. Look at that mirror finish, man. That is freaking awesome. Check for bubbles. I got no bubbles. I'm going to ship this off to my mother-in-law. I'm going to name this one. You know, I'm not really an artsy kind of person. Not artsy at all, but... You know, with that grain in there? Look at that, dude. Look how... Look, you can just look into that. Is that cool or what? So, Redneck Bill, we kind of think along the same lines. And last night I was in here the first night doing this. And I thought, man, you know, that kind of looks like the Grand Canyon, kind of. You know? And I could just picture my father-in-law back in the 70s trucking through the Grand Canyon. So, I'm going to call this one Grand Canyon. This is bitching. One last check for bubbles here. Nothing. Look at that mirror finish. Poxy art's fun. I think I'm going to shut the torch down. You know, I think we're good to go. Fun with epoxy. I appreciate you guys watching this. Uh, thanks for sticking with me here. And uh, this was a learning experience. I learned uh, by mistake and fixed it. Don't be afraid of this stuff. This stuff is much more giving than some of the people out there on the interweb would like you to think. But, I mean, you saw it, man. I mean, we fixed that with the freaking Dremel. Got that out of there, and I got like a mirror glaze finish. So, we're going to get on this countertop now. I'm feeling pretty good about this. If I have any screw-ups or any bubble marks or anything like that, I'm going to dig them out with the uh, sanding drum on the, on the Dremel, right? And then the uh, wet sand situation and just feather it out like Bill did. He stole my glory. He did all the work for me. That's the problem with Redneck Bill. I love him. All right, man. Epoxy art. This is called Grand Canyon. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. I'm going to do more of these. And we'll keep you up on what's going on. Adios, amigos.